end yes. broadcast. <gasps> no. It's live, it's live, all the way live. live. Just forget minute. about your troubles and your nine to five. And just fail. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hey, How baby. are things? How are things there? Wow, really good. Tomorrow, you know, uh, here in Italy, we're going to be able to go out on the street or something. You know, they're going to be opening up different things. They're going to be opening up the hairdresser. The, that's a... <laughs> All of us are waiting for that day. That day. And I did get a message from the nails ladies, too. And some other stuff will be opening up also. And I was just um, saying to Marco, it's like we've been in the... I celebrated yesterday two months of being home. Wow. Which is the first time in many years. In many years, I'm in sure. many years, yeah, wow. of being home. And it, um, it feels good. I mean, you know, I'm able to look at and connect with people, right, that I mm -hmm. have not connected with in so long. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and um, is, is it, um, people have been saying things like, I'm bored, but I, I'm not bored. Yeah, you're strange. <laughs> I'm very strange. I'm not bored. And don't come over unless you don't come over. Right. Especially all. don't come over if you're bored. Because True. Because I am not the entertainment director. Not only that, you might be really successful in transmitting boredom. That's right. All. Right. Maybe I'm a carrier and not, you know, afflicted. Or maybe they're a carrier. Right. But, uh, oh, yeah, also the um, a lot of people, you know, it, it's given us the time um, and the space to explore different things. And if people aren't willing to do that, then they choose boredom instead of actually. Yeah, I think there's also boredom might be a symptom of a muscle that hasn't been exercised much. Creativity, you know, people, I'm not creative. I got to go to my nine to five. That's where I find meaning. That's who I am. Then when that's taken away, they are really in bad shape. They just, because they choose to be basically, you know. Um, right. you I know, love you that. Can, you can I love that, that. Yeah. I love that, that it's the muscle, right? I love what you said. Be, uh, yeah. be, it's like almost a distractor. So if I were not choosing boredom, right? What, what else could I choose? What would I be aware of, you know? Right. And I think the nine to five, uh, absorbs a lot of energy that could be used in a different way. If you don't love what you do and you trudge off every morning to something that doesn't bring you joy, I think those murmurings are in the corners now. People are talking about heightened um, suicides and heightened uh, depression is because that still small voice can be heard. That quiet voice that says, you know what? Your, your life is bankrupt or you, you, you're not doing your, what you came here to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, why are you in this marriage? Why are you in, in this job? You know, your kids are driving you crazy. They're your kids. Right. Right. And if we just to like count to 10, take a, take another breath instead of immediately reacting to the first door, you know what I mean? Then, then what, what can we be aware of? Yeah, I was listening to someone who uh, was talking about um, Steve Jobs, yeah. famous, uh, you know, Apple, you know, Mac. Yeah. And on his deathbed, he was like, you know what, it, economically and, and work-wise, of course, in my life was a success, but I know I'm dying and I'm looking at my life and there's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. So it's like, you know, so many people have all this to do list and the accomplishments, but really, you know what I mean? Like you were saying, looking at um, what is vital, what is important, what is what is a healthy mm -hmm. life, thing, you know? Healthy. That's. You know, we tie it to money sometimes or we tie it to the acquisition of things. But when you are stuck in the house with your things, I'll tell you one thing. I've been, I've been giving stuff away. It's like this is obscene. This is, this is wrong. Why you need all this stuff? And you don't even see it on a regular basis because you're busy running around and get more stuff. Now exactly. you can't go shopping. 
you already have too much stuff in your house and it's talking to you like could you let go of me please <laughs> i talk to i do ask stuff that do i do i ask do stuff. too <laughs> i do too you, do you want to stay with me be, okay, do you want to go you know you now you know you hurt after about five minutes you cute <laughs> you're so cute but you know about five minutes and i and i tried on all these shoes and some of them said yeah i can hang and some of them said let me go let me go yeah i wonder there's a pair of shoes that i talked i've been talking to for years it was the first pair of shoes the the, the most i had ever spent on a pair of shoes ah. <laughs> And I, before I bought the shoes, I did talk to them. I was like, well, it's true that, but I'm like, maybe, maybe it was almost 10 years ago. They're orange, or, you know, Ferragamo. And I was like, if I buy you, will you contribute to me? Will you make me money? I got what did you, they say? like, yes, yes, yes. Every time I put on those shoes, I could keep them on for like one hour, two hours, and then they would hurt my feet. Yeah. But I would, they would, I would ask, do you want to travel with me? Yes. So one day I got this vision. The shoes were like, look, are you, are you happier in life now? Are you making more money? Okay, we did what we said we were gonna do. Don't bring us on the street. <laughs> Just carry us in your bag. Put us in the window with a nice view. Let us enjoy yes. I love our it. existence. I love it. I love it. I love it. It doesn't it. always look the way you think it's gonna look. You know what I mean? You don't I have to. It. But you know what? I have a couple of suitcases that I put together before coronavirus. And I was like, mm, I want to give them away. I want to give this stuff away. But I didn't get a yes. Do you know I have gone through those suitcases over the last two months and pulled out stuff and been like, mm-hmm, I'm going to wear this now. I'm going to wear this now. Mm-hmm. So looking at life, because if you're traveling all the time and you work and sing on stage and stuff like and if it's not something you would necessarily do in your work, right? and you haven't worn it in years, you know what I mean? Right. You might have got oh, but this, this is my thing. No, this is my thing. It's ego. I know exactly what it is. This little <laughs> voice says, girl, you got it going on. This thing is 15 years old. You can still put your slim brown hips in it. And so I hang it up because I'm proud that I can still wear it. But that's not the question to ask. The question is, do you still love me? Oh, is, nice. is this appropriate for this moment in your life? Could someone else find even more joy in me than you have? Nice. And that's what allowed me. That's really what allowed me. To, I let some nice. In fact, when I took it to the place to donate, I wanted to scream, there's some good shit in here. There's some <laughs> really good stuff. Don't put it on, you know. But I had to I had to get rid of it at the point that I made the decision because I'm like you. Put it in a bag. Put it exactly. back in the bag. Oh, this stuff is, what were you doing? Okay, you're tripping. You're probably grieving. You're probably grieving. So just give yourself a moment before you actually give it. You can put it in the bag. You can put the bag in the garage, but don't drive to the donation place. Exactly. Girl, when I let that stuff go, I tell you, I wanted to skip home. I felt so free. And the things that are in my closet that I'm now able to hang up and take a look at, Right. I can actually get up in the morning and say, oh, I forgot I had you. You were way cute. I think I'm going to put you on. When it's all stuffed in crevices, just, you know, because you don't have room for it. That right there says something. Right. And some things take up more room. And just because you spent um, money on something or you have a memory with something doesn't mean that you actually have to hold on to it. That is that is super truth right there. And I think if we translate the word money into the word energy, okay, so these are $400, whatever. That's a lot of money for a thing, right? But if it isn't given back to you, you know, it's like if I could snap my fingers and make that $400 go right back in my wallet, and get rid of the thing I paid for it. Some of the things I know, I'm like you, I create stories around them. You know, like I was in Bahia and you, you know, stories around it, but it's the story that brings life, not the, the thing. Exactly. Necessarily. And when you um, 
share it with the world. Like now me, I've got my mom's stuff, right? I've got, and she had her mom's stuff. So that's one, two generations. And then I have my husband's stuff and I have my sister's stuff and I have my own stuff. That is a lot of stuff. And some <laughs> things when I approach them are easy to give away because I don't have a story attached to it. But don't let it get to my stuff where the stories are deep and wide and so colorful and so memorable. Um, I, I took some photographs of things that I really loved and they were on my phone. So that's gonna be where I, if I still feel like I have to tell stories about things, they'll be in a photograph form and not in real life because other people can create more stories. Like my mother's stuff, she's beautiful African fabric and things, you know, she loved the dollar store. So there's a bunch of dollar store stuff. And, you know, she'd take the cards and she'd write over the, what the people wrote and put her own messages on it. It's hard for me to let those things go because she touched them and she changed them. Right. But that's not, but that's ego saying it can only change me. Well, no, of course you did touch you and change you too. <laughs> yeah, but everything, everything, everything that anything touches changes them anyway. Yeah. So and who, you know, who, is, who is to say that I should hoard them or hold on to them because they were my mother's and because, I don't know, it's just amusing. It's not, it's not something I've totally figured out, but it is just a, a different question to ask about our attachment to things. Well, you know, and our attachment to things and our um, attachment to people. You know, in this particular time, um, I've, I've had such um, so many opportunities um, that some I've taken advantage of to reach mm -hmm. out to people that I haven't talked to or seen in years. Uh, you know, and, and that's um, been good. Uh, it's been great because a lot of times, like you said, you have stuff, right? Like things and stuff. I mean, the, everything has energy, right? Everything has a connection. So things that you don't have room to put in your closet, like you said, because you've got other things in your closet and you can't even see them. So people that you don't have um, time because of your to-do list and your activities yeah. to connect yeah. with. And, um, and, or even, um, so there's two different things that are showing up, things that you don't have, people you don't have time uh, to connect with. And connecting with them, it somehow reminds you of, of some of your riches, you know? Some of the wealth that constitutes who you are at yeah. the moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. You may not have taken into active consideration you know, right. but it doesn't mean that it's not part. It's not part of your life. It's not part of your how health. Right. It's not part of your right. heart. Right. Is what I wanted to say. Right. And, um, and other um, people that maybe you haven't been in contact with because there was a sour note, you know, or yeah. in your relationship, yeah. and somehow this space, this social distance, right, mm -hmm. um, and this lockdown, quarantine time. Mm -hmm. Gives you sort of um, space to look at it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally, I, and 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 people have um, have had all kinds of experiences around the quality that this time brings. Sometimes it can bring um, uh, what you just mentioned. You know, this expanded notion of really was that so important? Why haven't I talked to this person in so long? And sometimes it brings an annoyance with small things. Uh, folks blame it on a cabin fever or whatever, but things that would not have annoyed you to the same extent, whether it be, you know, just something small and it's just, oh, that was stupid or that was, you know, why did they do that? Or why did they say it that way? Why did she only answer me with an emoji? Why did she say, you know, <laughs> what? Then if it was a different time when you were on your way to a meeting, you wouldn't have given it a second thought. Right. So, so just sort of questioning and being curious about, I, for me, I would say, am I tripping? Or is this something that really desires or needs all this energy that I'm 
you know, that I'm putting into it. Because I'm like you. People have resurfaced in my life, some who I've really missed and wondered why we hadn't been in better touch, some who I don't know well at all, but who have risen to the top like cream uh, with some really interesting things to say, you know, yeah. interesting perspective about this quality of time that we're in. And I'm like, wow, I never knew so-and-so was so, you know, was so deep or, or had these, con because we never took the time. Yeah. And and there are no coincidences. No, no, no. I've, I've still got one that stays in my mind, a coincidence which I still haven't got yet. I have not got the why. Um, this guy I met after coming back from LA on a tour with you, actually, mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> on the, on the um, red eye, right? Into New York, I saw this guy, a uh, black guy, uh, we were like the only two brown people in the, waiting for the luggage at 6 a.m. And we both looked at one another and quickly looked away. And then we started laughing because it was like, you know, don't look at me at six in the morning. <laughs> okay, so we exchanged cards. He gave me his card. Um, he gave me a, a, um, a postcard. I thought it was uh, RuPaul, right? Transvestite, oh. right? Ru RuPaul. But his number was on the back, so I took it and closed it. A couple of years later, when I moved to Italy, I brought all my stuff with me. And I got a call that somebody, this guy at the American Academy needed connection with um, some, he's a photographer and he needed connection with somebody um, in Italy who was uh, of color for the New York Times. So I said, oh yeah, I can give him, I've been working with people, I can give him some connections. And I happen to have been going through all the stuff, like you say, that you accumulate and you bring to Italy. And I find this card from RuPaul. Mm. But I turn it around and it's his name on it. So wow. I go to see him and I realize it was him. Wow. Trans yeah, okay. Fast forward, I'm on Martha's Vineyard a couple of years later at a, <laughs> with Marco at, a, um, at an art gallery exhibit. And there's a guy walking around and I say to him, you know, I'm sorry, you look so much like this guy I met from Italy, in, in Italy. I tell him and he said, that's my brother. What? <laughs> I said, that's your brother. I met your mom. She was living in South Africa. I met your mom in Italy. Yes. I said, unbelievable. He said, yeah, he's having an exhibit in New York. I'm going to New York next week. We went to the <laughs> exhibit. We saw him. His mom was there. Oh, my gosh. Nothing else. I mean, you know, maybe it's just about seeing coincidences. I don't know, but you know, it, it doesn't have to make sense, I guess, right? Well, I don't. I. I mean, sometimes the sheer chance of it happening that way is enough to awaken your heart to see things are are destined to be, or that there is an unseen. Um, pattern. And sometimes it's not that you have so much business with this person and so much stuff that has to be done, but just the way it happened is a lesson for, you know, for your life. Yeah. That, that this is all a grand design. Absolutely. And we are all meant to be in each other's lives in some kind of way. Now, Debbie had a saying, she said, some come for a reason and some come for a season. And I love that because love we're that. always trying to find the deep and hidden meaning and stuff. And sometimes it's like, look, I'm just passing through. Uh, I don't mean no harm. Hey, here you go. We're connected in six different ways. Ain't that something? And you just keep it moving. Yes. And you know, there is that, um, I get that awareness that, and I don't know if we did it, but I get that awareness that sometimes, you know, a lot of people believe in destiny and, you know, reincarnation and all this stuff, right? Um, but that, um, and even religiously speaking, a lot of times the mere fact that we're alive is that we messed up something in a previous life or something we're going to get oh, a yeah. yeah. But sometimes you walk on the street and you walk by someone and you make eye contact or you smile. And there's this whole feeling all over your body, right? So that happened. And you keep walking 
And it's almost like you've evened out the score with them from different existences. Yep. So maybe this guy and I never actually accomplish it or whatever, that it's still in my mind. Maybe we'll have to meet again in next lifetime to actually re, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But even, even as we walk through life, anybody that we come in contact with, just to say, I recognize you. And that's something that this COVID thing has done. It has caused us to recognize not only individuals, but groups of people that have been invisible, groups of people who have been marginalized, um, ways of being in the world that are different from our, our own, um, you know, and just ways that the world is that we might want to change. But who's got time to change the world when we're going, we're working overtime and trying to make that money and trying to, you know, now all that's been taken off the table to some extent. And I'm not minimizing people's suffering because people really are worried about how they're going to make it. Well, my opinion is that the old, um, the old paradigm, the old set of rules is falling away. And if you want to reach back for that, it's going to bring pain. It's only going to bring pain because it's never going to be the same. Absolutely. And the, the, I don't the, see oh, and, 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 and it's your reaching for that sameness that, and I know this from my grieving with Phil, for me wanting what I had was just A, impossible and B, so, so painful every time my mind went back to what was it it just it was like a slap in the face and little by little i haven't figured it all out but little by little i'm realizing i can have that energy in a new way is it satisfying like a physical existence no it's different <clears throat> it's different and you always know that it's a divine creative force when it's moving you forward and not backward, divine creative force doesn't give you what you had yesterday. That's not, if that's what you have, then that's your manifestation, not divine. Right, right. And if we're willing to see those, um, those signals, those signs and receive them in a certain way, then, then we're, we continue creating something that's not only a contribution for our lives, um, but also for opens up a different space on the planet. Yeah. Well, this is what this is really what's needed. Are you are you kidding me that LA for the first time in years and years you can see the skyline, people can breathe the air, um, the <coughs> levels of pollution that? down. You know, you can see in India, you can see the Himalayas for the first time in thirty years. Um, you know, so nature is telling us something about our behavior on this planet that we would do well to to pay attention to and and i think you know people are like well yeah that's all fun all that existential crap but how am i going to make money and how am i going to again that is reaching for an old way of doing things and if money is energy and yes of course we need this energy in order to translate it into things that we can eat and things that we can wear and things in places that we can live but but if we ask a different question are there other ways of of elevating this energy that don't involve green paper which is also you know so not real it right well, you know i love that you say that that money is energy and so people are looking to get money. But if you don't connect with you, because you are energy too, then how can you be vibrationally congruent with money right. so that it can bring you, you know? Right. And with your body. Because all that stuff that you named and all the stuff that money it, we use money for, clothing, food, shelter, that's for our body. We, the yeah. spirit, you we know. Don't need we, that. Hello, with I mean, God, Allah, you know. <laughs> It, we are, we don't require that. So if you, what, what kind of, and this is this, uh, you know, this health, wealth and beauty, what kind of invitation, what kind of, what kind of connection with the social distance that people are now obliged to follow, right. what kind of proximity can we have with our bodies? Woo -woo. 
Now you speak it. Now you speak it. <laughs> you know, yeah. with that other side of the coin, the other side of the coin, which has been neglected. And I think, I think just being curious about it, not having any answers. I don't have the answer. But I do know that this quality of time has given us opportunity that if we can seek the wisdom in it, the joy in it, even the kind of aggravation of it and, and be curious about why, um, to be curious about, well, maybe, maybe it's not so much money. Maybe we can figure out ways to support each other, take money out of the equation. You do for me. I do for you. I have some skill sets that you don't have. <laughs> you know, back to a barter system or a system of, of, you know, I don't expect anything for this. Wow, how transformational would that be if I was just like, I'm gonna do this for you because you are a divine creature on this planet trying to make it just like I am. I'm not giving you anything. I'm just sharing this space and then you keep it moving. Because I think I see a lot of people on the street, like I'm homeless, you know, you know, asking for money and that, that, that there's nothing wrong with giving money if that's what your heart says, but that sets up sometimes a real, I have, you don't, there's a, there's a silent transaction that happens there that less than greater than it's some, some kind of thing goes on. That's not healthy. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I was just talking about this on one of my, um, uh... One of my online classes about access your communication genius about how that we have that we create that um, disappearing act. And I gave the example of, you know, living in New York and going on to the subway and there being somebody homeless there asking for money and how you can totally perceive how you put up this wall and you don't even want to look at them. You don't right. even want to perceive them because you go and do the guilty thing for you or your heart starts bleeding for them or whatever that is. Whatever it is. Something, that's something you don't, either way, you don't want to um, access that, you know? Right. So what what um, in that moment, but it, it cuts you off from you also, you know? It, it, it does, it's not a, that, it's not a, whether you give, you don't give, that's sort of like not even the point. Yeah, but it's um, like what you said about asking, is that actually, is this giving going to create more? You know, is it going, are they going to actually receive it? Or is it just me, you know, uh, getting rid of, you know, pay, paying off my guilt, basically? Or, or just, you know, you know, the fear that goes, you know, or the conversation that goes something like, you know, he looked well enough that he could work. And what's he out here asking for for money for? And he probably gonna go use it for drugs. He says he's hungry, but he don't look hungry to me. You know, I see he's got his <laughs> hair done. You know, just all this, you know. Conversation. You exactly. were just trying to get where you were going. And, <laughs> and this what if it, person where, what deposits if you... themselves right in front of you and and and, and just causes a dialogue that you didn't, yeah. you didn't ask for. Um, and so, it's like the conversation know. you were saying with the shoes, you know? It's not, um, it's, do you love me? Is this about love? Do you love me? Is there something, is is this going to be keeping you a pair of shoes? Is it gonna be something that enlargens my heart and this in love or, or not? And well, that's why every situation has to be taken with that question in mind, because giving money or not giving money or giving eye contact or not giving eye contact is is more the point than um, I mean, is not the point is it's just, you know, if you're able to see yourself in the situation somebody's asking you for money, somebody different from you, somebody labeling themselves as homeless. If you want to know the truth, we're all homeless. Or we're all at home. What, or, or he, maybe. Well, if he's it, when he says home, homeless, he's looking at you saying you are driving a car, so clearly you have more resources. And, you know, it's just, it's, right. it, it's really, it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, 
And I think it bears some real creative um, conversation and musing. Yeah. It's very personal. You know, one of the things I just saw this film, um, and I've seen lots of you know what I call X Men. Um, I call I, uh, Aviator, you know, with um, Leonardo DiCaprio, mm. and it's basically about the um, the founder of um, TWA, you know, oh. who they, they were going against Pan America or something airlines, and he was actually uh, quite autistic, you know. And um, uh, he would go into this repetitive stuff, but he was brilliant. Yeah. And he was brilliant, let's say, and he was brilliant. And you know, all of us have um, really that um, capacity to cross that edge and be obsessive. You know, we could be homeless. We could have chosen homeless. We didn't. <clears throat> Lots of, and every choice we make, really, like we were saying, has to be, has to have you con in its consideration. Right. So a lot of people have chosen um, uh, homeless um, for many different reasons, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not your fault. You no. know what I mean? And, no. and, and so, and it's not a bad choice, it's just their choice. So your choice to give them or not give them money is not a bad choice. It's just the choice in the moment. And so right. what, yeah, what, um, you know, what, and this is the thing about this period is ha having clarity, not being in just reactionary choices. Right, right, right. right having right. clarity about right. um, really starting from what is truly home right. for you. Right, this, right, right. This planet. That's right. Your body. You've chosen yeah. it, yeah. you know, your heart, you have yeah. it. Yeah. And which things are going to be a contribution to that, to your home, to your right. heart, your body, the planet. Right. And, and what if we, and how much can that help your mental health, your physical health, you know oh what I mean? Oh my gosh. And you invite the vibration of abundance and money into your life and, 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 uh, and show your beauty. Yeah. Well, people don't even know what, what, I mean, a money and abundance are not the same thing. Well, not at all. Well, abundance can be a part, a money can be a part of abundance. Exactly. But to me, abundance, I mean, just abundance, more than you deserve, more than perhaps you can even use just for yourself, but just wherever you look, there's some, there's some, you would just, it's like being in the ocean. It's so it's so nourishing. It's full. It's, it's full. full. There's no it's lack. Full. There's Abundance no is the lack. opposite of, or the is beyond lack. It's right. not even in the, yeah. And so, uh, absolutely. So and this for people to, to ask for abundance, to me, abundance is more valuable than, because there are people with a lot of money who don't have abundance. Exactly. And because don't have wealth. And don't have wealth. They don't have wealth. They're the fear. You got money and then you're afraid you might lose it. There's a lot of people right now who prior to COVID were sitting pretty as far as their IRA or their investment accounts or this and that. And they're rushing around trying to find safety and moving it from place to place, selling this, buying that in order to control a situation that doesn't want to be controlled and that, that, that cannot be and how much is this going to be it's not about next month two months from now three months from now this has changed the world this has changed the, it has you know, changed the world and it's it, it is going to be a part of the way we live going forward now how how much of that is based in fear and how much of that is based in love how much of that is um a trudging sort of oh we got to do it because we don't want to catch something from those. You know, it's interesting. There's two classes, of, maybe more than two classes, but there is certainly on the media, there's the class of people who have the disease, who who have caught uh, the virus. And then there are there's a class of people who show no symptoms, but could carry the virus. So how interesting that those who are, don't have fever and don't feel ill might also 
be contributing to spreading it. Okay, so that's a that's really that's really where this public health concern around wearing masks and washing your hands and you know because all of this kind of speaks to the needs of the many versus the needs of the few. Yeah. So if, you, if you're young and you don't have underlying health conditions, you say to yourself, "This doesn't really concern me. I want to get back out to the hairstylist and get my nails done because <laughs> even if I get it." I probably won't die from it. Right. And I've been there. They've got good, I've been to that one you go to. They've got nice, they've got social <laughs> distancing. <laughs> that was, makes it, uh, makes it fine. But um, also this, this um, social, you know, for me, you know me, I, I love um, embracing, you know, yeah, I love too. touch. I work with touch. I work with yeah, in, and so, um, you know, going back to normal, how far back um, and, and living in a place like Italy, you know, being- I don't even know how you're gonna do it. <laughs> being African-American, right? We like touch. We like, and we so like Italy was one of the first places to have, besides China, to have such a high level. <clears throat> and uh, my buddy, um, it's from Dem Dems Abroad. He was doing surveys. He lives in South Africa about the, the percentage of uh, brown people in the States much higher um, because we are um, uh, caloroso, warm and, and touchy. So yeah. one of the things that I, um, you know, it's also a challenge for me Right. Um, to be able to trans to know that I am capable of transmitting my affection mm. without, um, without physical, the physical touch. Without Isn't the it touch. interesting that all of this is pointing <clears throat> to the spiritual part of I mean, what do we really give when we kiss, when we hug? We're giving energy. So can we create different ritual, new ritual, and really practice while we are social di socially distanced? that hug not through a virtual way through a phone or through an app but really through the only way energy ever gets transmitted you can tell when somebody is sending you love that's real that is not something trite that right. you just say that is real and it and, and it can also transform situations and it doesn't matter the distance you know it doesn't you can feel it you know, you can really feel it. So I'm, I just think we have an opportunity to exercise some new strategies. Um, and we can call them new. <laughs> we can call them new. <laughs> some new old, 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 some old, old new. <laughs> Marco was, we were talking yesterday about water um, travels downstream. Mm. Mm. And um, and so, what are the roots? What are the what are the origins of uh, of this transmission that you're talking about? And that is something to explore. Um, you know, not back in the Middle Ages when you know you had to do. You know what I mean? How far? How do we go beyond time? Beyond time. Beyond time. Yeah, and beyond place. Uh, and beyond matter or um, to find out really what matters to us and what's important but to us. What's, what's, yeah. what's essential? You know, yeah. that's, what an interesting question, what's essential? And look what's bubbling up. Not people with a lot of money, not people with high educations necessarily, but- those well, Those aren't the criteria. It doesn't mean that people with a lot of money don't have it. No, it, it doesn't. That, that is not the, only, the, the factor. The, the, the but base. in this in this situation, people the most unlikely suspects have bubbled up as essential: grocery store clerks, people who work on meat packing processing lines, folks who sweep the floors, who pick the vegetables. Um, some of the most maligned, mundane, invisible people on the planet have bubbled up. Frontline workers, you know, EMTs. I mean, all of these folks who you know, were not teachers. I mean, artists, essential human beings to our, um, to our way of, of, of life. And so we need to ponder when we say, 
uh, I'm looking forward for things to go back to normal. Normal wasn't great for everybody. Everybody wasn't feeling like normal. Some people, homelessness was normal. Being ignored and being invisible was normal. Do we want to continue into this next phase with that same mentality? I would hope not. And are we willing to recognize that if there is enough on the planet to feed yeah. everyone, everybody, the planet, then is that something that we can do? And right. then what can we create beyond that? Right. right. They're showing pictures of farmers pouring milk down the drain and shooting pigs in the head because they can't, because the meat processing plants have shut down because of COVID. Um, so they're, they're rather than, well, they are dumping thousands and thousands of gallons of milk because they can't stop the cows from producing and they can't do anything with these pigs. There's nowhere for them to go and there's more babies coming. So, so they're looking at incentives for farmers and trying to give them money to cover the cost of their losses. And I'm like, why not rethink the entire system. We have a system that was fragile and was not sustainable to begin with. Yes. You need to tell me with all these people that are hungry, the only thing you can think of to do with the milk is to pour it down the drain. We right. don't have minds that are nimble enough to figure out how to, you know, I've, I've given some away, but there's just so much more and we have no way to get it to the people. Right. That is that is an untruth, number one. And it is also points that the problem is not that the meatpacking plants are closed. The problem is that the system of putting meat on the table is broken. And it was broken before COVID. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So and what how much is it revealed about what was broken? Right. And this, right. you know, these, um, I just ran into, I stayed on a farm um, with the, the biodynamic farming, you know, the Steiner method. Oh, yes, I know about that. I visited one in Cuba. Yeah, I was in Australia, actually, with one. And how much, um, how, what, you know, what contribution, and we'll, we'll, we'll end with these questions, these invitations, right? Mm -hmm. live. What, um, what invitation can this post-COVID period, COVID-19 period, be for us to launch a, a 2020 vision? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, indeed. There's so much opportunity and so much joy. And nature is just singing. Nature is singing. I wake up every morning and the birds are like, hallelujah, y'all are still in my in <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> I remember you singing. Oh, no, it wasn't that in the in a in an old antique church. Oh, in yes. That was amazing grace. Oh, oh right. Moment. Oh my gosh. Every time we hear that, Marco's like, do you remember with Nina? I was like, yes. Oh, I <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I know you've got a call at two. I, I do. Every time I go into this, into a church though, into one with some nice acoustics, I've got a little bit of, <clears throat> but I can do it for you. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. All right, all right, can I do it right? You're good, girl. Go, 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 go. <laughs> you, you're good. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now i see i love you cast love you miss nina love and uh, you. the the great 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 sunday to you my love you too sweet sweet and let's do this again Exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. This okay. time works for me. Sunday okay. in the park with Sunday, Sunday. Nina. Good one. Love you. Love you too. Bye bye. bye.